This versus video is brought to you by Audible, the best way to take your audiobooks with you anywhere you want to go on any device you want to use. Two phones, seemingly identical looking. We got the iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone 7 Plus. If you can't tell the difference between the two phones by looking at the front, you are like most people because I'm, I was kind of lying to you. This is the 8 Plus and this is the 7 Plus. They look identical from the front. The back and the internals are another story. I know a lot of you guys are debating whether or not to upgrade to the 8. Maybe you want to wait for the iPhone 10, or maybe you're coming from an older iPhone or Android. So I want to take these two phones and compare them head to head and decide if you should pick up the iPhone 8, stick with what you've got, or perhaps wait for the 10 or another device. Let's jump in. I'm going to focus mostly on the Plus models here, since those are the higher end of the devices. Uh, but the non-Plus models, almost everything I'm going to talk about is going to be pretty close to identical. So looking at these phones, they look very similar. In fact, the iPhone 8 is the fourth iteration of the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus design that we've seen. Not to say it's a bad design, but it is a very familiar design. This is definitely the best version of it. And I mentioned the fronts of these devices look identical, but I was actually surprised how different the backs actually look with the glass back. And the glass back brings one big difference with the two phones. You are getting Qi wireless charging. I'm not talking about Apple's air power thing that's coming sometime next year. This is true wireless charging. I put this phone on my Samsung wireless fast charger and it wirelessly charged, which is really nice to have without having to deal with a third party case. Wireless charging is a big deal for me. It may not be a giant deal for you, but if you want the convenience of just putting your phone on a pad, huge props uh, to the iPhone 8. I guess the Apple's monitor here is, was better late than never, but it is definitely here. Another surprising difference between the phones is actually the colors. So the iPhone 8s are available in silver, space gray, and gold, and all three colors look vastly different than the last gen phones. So I've got the silver right here, which I think is actually a beautiful color, but it doesn't look silver. It looks more eggshell white. The gold is more of a muted gold. The space gray is kind of a darkish black gray hue, different than sort of the straight matte black we had with the last gen. The colors are very different. I imagine by design, so the phones can look different. But if you want a phone that's going to sort of just aesthetically appear to be a different device, um, they did a nice job with the 8. I actually really like all three colors. I'm going to get the same things out of the way about these phones, and the big disappointment for me are the screens. The same 5.5 inch 1080p 401 PPI screens we've seen for years. It's not a bad screen. Things just don't look, I guess, crispy. Flock. What's the opposite of crispy? Soggy. Soggy. The screen just looks a little soggy. If you've used a modern Samsung device, you can see, definitely see a difference in the screen, and that's where you may want to wait uh, for the iPhone 10. It's getting that higher res screen, which is actually going to be made by Samsung. Uh, it does bring a true tone display, which is nice. It doesn't do that much for me. You can sort of change the way the screen looks depending on your environment. It's fine. It's not going to be a differentiating factor whether or not you should buy the phone or upgrade from the 7. So the mortal here, despite true tone display, the screens are, screens are pretty much identical. From a purely spec standpoint, these phones read almost identical, at least on paper. Same camera hump and all. They both have the same 12 megapixel sensor, the same 7 megapixel sensor on the front. The same wide angle f 1.8 aperture and the same 2.8 telephoto. So the A11 Bionic chip inside, which we'll talk more about, is going to do a lot more processing than what the A10 Fusion chip could do. So the pictures are going to look different, despite the hardware being relatively similar. So bear that in mind. There's obviously a big difference on paper with the A11 chip versus previous generation iPhones. But what's that going to mean to the end user? Apple's not about raw horsepower, they're about user experience. And it's a fast user experience. Uh, on the iPhone 8. I never thought the 7 Plus was a slow phone, but you can see the difference here opening up apps. Opens up faster on the iPhone 8 Plus. That's something you will notice and perhaps will add up over time to a lot of time. Other things you're going to do, like gaming, of course, are here. AR kit's going to be nice and fast. Uh, things are going to be very quick on the iPhone 8. And if you want a phone that's going to last you for years, I get the feeling the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus are going to be a phone that's going to be quick for a long time, because the difference appears to be drastic over the iPhone 7 Plus. The 8 Plus has a bit of a smaller battery, but supposedly processor improvements on the A11 will null that milliamp hour difference, so you should get the same battery life on both devices. 
Price is a big determining factor whenever you pick up any phone. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus are still obviously less expensive options, uh, starting at $549 or $699, depending on whether you get the 7 or the Plus. The 8 got a $50 price bump over what they used to be when the 7 and 7 Plus was new. It's now $699 or $799 as your baseline. I want to thank my friends at Audible for making this versus video possible. You probably know Audible. Chances are you're already using Audible. But if you are not, you should definitely check them out. This is what I use anytime I am in my car. Right now I'm listening to James Patterson's Black Book. It's my third book by him. I really like the guy who's doing the narration on it. But I change phones a lot. So I love the fact that I can always pick up where I was in my audiobook but now I'm using the new iPhone 8 or the Galaxy Note 8. It transfers all the books over for me. I went on a bit of a kick with historical fiction. Now I'm back to kind of regular fiction. I'm waiting for the new Dan Brown book to hit sometime next month. It's the next one in the Robert Langdon series, so that'll be my next book. They've got more than books there too. They've got original audio shows, they got news, comedy, kind of anything you can listen to. Audible's giving away a free 30-day trial, and you also get a free audio book to go with that. If you want to check it out, go to audible.com slash techno. We'll link to it here and also down below. So that's my opinion on the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, but what I think doesn't matter. What you think or what you do with your dollars do, and are you going to put that hard earn cash towards a brand new shiny phone? Let me know in the comments down below. Find a comment that gives a good insight. We'll pin it to the top and you can, you can be, be well known there. Until next time, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo.